So I love working on paper. I love working even on, on plastic. So those black and white drawings up there that we were just looking at are actually on UPO, which is, they call it a synthetic um, paper, but it's, it's plastic. Uh, I like the flow of the ink. It moves really fast and wonderfully on the plastic, so it feels really good. And I've used it for ice skaters and things like that. I have no idea how that material is going to hold up because it has not been around long enough for us to really know. Uh, but everything else is on paper, and I have to say that I am ruthlessly indifferent to paper. I'm, well, that's not true. I love paper, and I have lots of really wonderful paper, but I don't touch it. But So then this, what do you mean by indifferent? Uh, you don't I mean, care which paper you're using? Exactly. So okay. I, I actually feel a lot looser and freer when it's in consequential paper, when it's really cheap and, and sort of terrible stuff. Okay. So um, there's a lot of very thin paper. A lot of these drawings are done in, um, in sketchbooks and just cut out. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there are papers that some people would consider nicer than other papers, right? There are great papers made out of, you know, 100% cotton, and there are handmade papers, and they're beautiful. And I have a lot of gorgeous papers that rolled up that, um, you know, can be inherited. <laughs> yes, <laughs> done. <laughs> but, um, but these are not they. These, these are not these are, these are special not papers. These are not they. But one thing that I would like to say is that, that in terms of drawing, what, what I really love is being able to use lots of different materials. So this, which looks very much like the, um, the pigment sticks, actually predates the pigment sticks, and it's oil paint put on with, an, with a brush mm -hmm. and charcoal. So it's paint and charcoal, and it's drawn on, on a piece of paper, on a, from a pad of paper. Um, but it seems pretty sturdy. It's it's pretty sturdy. It's pretty sturdy. So, um, you know, for the most part, a lot of the paper will be acid free and should be able to survive. However, this is a contradiction to use oil paints on paper directly. So sometimes I, the paper's gessoed and sometimes it isn't, and um, you just have to see how it's going to be over time. But again, this drawing is probably. Um, this drawing is probably approaching 17 years, maybe 18 years, okay. maybe even older. And it hasn't been framed, right. sealed, protected in any way. It's just sitting around in a stack of paper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. been. It's been, um, it's been between acid-free interleaving, you know, slip sheets between paper and just in a pile all this time. But I do have this little tabletop etching press that I acquired in 2006. So I've had it um, 15, 16 years now. Mm -hmm. And what I have done is, um, and I haven't used it that often, I've used it sporadically, so I used it in 2006 and then I didn't use it again until 2018, 19, 20. But what I've really loved doing is making monotypes. And this monotype, if you look really closely, you can see that what I'm doing is actually working with, um, with paper dolls. So this is a cutout, and then her whole shadow is going through the press more than once, and having it and moving it, and then going in and, and drawing into the whole thing. So the actual materials can be um, ink, they can be paint, and they can be pastels and charcoal things going in. And what's it? And what's it on? It's on a piece of paper. Okay, just, a little just piece paper. Of, a little piece of crummy paper that I had, and the paper is just mounted with mounts. It has little um, adhesive mounting tape onto a piece of, of paper behind it, but it's actually small. And here's another piece. This is from. Uh, so that was 2006, uh, five, six, I was doing that. And this is from 2021. Let me get it from here because of where the lights are. Oh, OK. Down. So there, there you have it. And, and so all of this is worked over um, what was printed. Uh, 
again, this is a mixture. There, there, there could be watercolors here, charcoal, um, inks, everything added onto the onto the surface, and basically, um, they come from things like this. These little paper dolls and cutouts, which is what I'm working on. It was the most recent from 2000, from 2022. That one looks like you made it. Yeah, I made them all. Okay. Cut them out. They're like so. It's it, yeah. I cut them out and okay. then I put them on the So plate. whatever. So whatever you used over here, you it's also made this, right. this bathtub. Right. With a, I drew this thing it. and okay. the woman in it, her head, okay. and I cut it out. And you can you can best see what what the impression was like from seeing the shadow of it. Mm -hmm. So there were uh, a couple of different um, prints that I made. I reversed them. I you know I changed them around, and then um, and then worked them all differently. And I, I find that really exciting to do. Uh, and again, the paper is different than I'm using at different points in time. So I I don't know that you know it'll hang together, but. Um, the doll you just showed us over there yeah. is exactly this one here. No, no, no. This, this is from 2020, from 2022. It has some very similar stance, two arms apart. No, okay. Yeah, this is, this is what you just saw actually um, framed to go for that show that's going up to Chico Arts oh, right okay. now. So that was created. On the one side, there was, it was one pull through with the figure and on the mm -hmm. other in the, in the um, diptych, it, it went through multiple times. And so does that positions. one date from 2018? No, right now. From right now. Okay, right so you're now, doing it again. January. 2006, 2018, and 2022. Right, yeah, and there was some 2019s in between. Okay. Yeah. So just while we're here, here's a drawing that dates from um, 1975. So this is probably one of the oldest drawings I've got here. And this was also a period in which I was really um, loving pencil, just simple mm -hmm. graphite. And this is oil pastel and then drawn with the pencil into the oil pastel. So there's a faint outline of an ink marker here, light colored ink marker, and then the oil pastel, and then the pencil into the oil pastel on the surface. Does this look any different now than it did almost 50 years ago? No. It was in a sketchbook. The paper looks perhaps a little more yellowed. It was pro but that probably happened within um, the first year or two. And again, here this is exposed to light and it's been sitting here in my studio right here for 20 years. Okay. Now, is your eye and memory good enough that if there were a tiny change after 50 years, you would notice it? Like if the green were a little less green or if, or if, or if one, one element were fading compared to another? Uh, that's a really good question, and and the area that that where you would see a change would be this line here, this ye light yellow right, line. This yellow right, this yellow-orange so looks like be, it could be because, faint. Because, or... right, because the inks are, are fugitive that you have in markers, particularly the markers back in the 1970s. Yeah. Um, but, but then again, it was also really secondary to all of this work here. So mm -hmm. I don't think that the work is diminished, mm -hmm. but probably there was some fading in this. Some fading in the orange lines in the left corner. Yeah, well, you can see there. Or throughout. just in general, the yeah. marker that's throughout all, a little right. bit. Yeah. Um, Although even from this distance, I catch the hints of of the of the marker yeah. everywhere. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not completely it gone. It gives a little feeling it's not everywhere. Completely gone. But this is a really good question about being about work that's fugitive, and I wanted to show you some works that um, were with, done with the material that I did actually abandon because of the fact that they're fugitive. Now these particular works have been here and and pretty much hidden, but um, these works were all done with water soluble color pencils. They date from 1977, 78, 79, 80. And that was about the end of, of my using them. Um, I loved working with them. I loved being able to build up really layers and layers of color. And they came in different thicknesses so that when you didn't use the pencil, you used the chunkier one, it, it got goopier. Um, 
However, I was in the home of a collector and saw two drawings on the wall and they essentially were gone. So the light exposure um, really destroyed them. They were not color fat, light fast. Um, and this is a, a, a material that I actually stopped using. So this is when you say destroyed, there's nothing to be done about it. You know, they're just faded and I, I, fading. I, un I took them and I unframed them <laughs> and, um, and I started working on one and felt that my hand was so different after 45 years, almost 50 years that there'd be a great drawing there. I could do a great drawing over it, but, be a but, new it, one. but it would be really different. And so I had a conversation with the, um, with the collector and decided just to reframe it and um, not even touch the second one. Okay. I mean, I unframed them, cleaned them, which one should do every once in a while because they're little they're insects in there sometimes. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, and matter, what, what... no matter how, how one, you know, it has nothing to do with housekeeping. It just has to do with the fact that little spiders sometimes get into things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The world is uh, constantly changing thing full of little little things but um when you say cleaned it what did you do to clean it oh the, the, i opened it up and got the bugs out okay just uh, yeah just inside the frame you know sorry. took it apart okay. and everything no no rubbing I was, no no i wasn't cleaning the artwork no itself. product no. no there was no no dirt on the on the artwork okay. and you know some of these drawings that i've done are in fact on paper that have a gesso on them. I've gessoed the paper, and then this is the oil paint and the charcoal. Yeah. And, um, you know, basically uh, things will look like this in a book, and um, they, they will have, like, this is gesso and ink. Mm hmm. And, and some of it is oil paint. And they're all different. And, and in some cases, the paper is gessoed, mm -hmm. you know. And in other cases, I've worked on a page which um, just has no gesso on it. That's just smooth. And um, it is not, um, it's not predetermined. I mean, sometimes I've gessoed like a whole lot of pages in advance and then I go and I'm drawing and sometimes I get to a page and I, they're not gessoed, but I keep working anyway. Okay. And, um, and this is pretty contemporaneous and shows the fact that, um, that I work a lot with Conte crayon and watercolor and uh, pastel and chalks all together. So 2021. This is um, 2021 and 2022. This is like right now. This is like all pandemic. Yeah. Another thing is that for the most part, most of um, the drawings they did for many years have a, a fixative sprayed over them. Mm -hmm. And these from the pandemic do not, which is Why not? Um, a, a change. And probably a little bit of fixative would be good for them because you can't touch the surface on any of this. Um, when what? there is fixative, you can touch the surface? It's not good, but it protects the surface. It keeps, okay. it keeps the, the pastel, the chalks in place. Mm -hmm. keeps you from smearing them around as much, from blowing away. Um, yeah, so sure. uh, a, a lot just has to do with the moment because I'm a very self-indulgent artist and I get caught up just in working and want to keep working. Uh, and I'm not really um, materials oriented, which is why I think it's really important to have a look at some of the stuff that I've done because it is not necessarily traditional and um, it's not really... always archival. The materials aren't archival, my methods aren't archival, um, but I become enamored with how something looks and so I tend to pursue it, even when I know better. Mm -hmm. And I think the other area of um, 
great difference in, in terms of materials and um, usage has to do with uh, photography and the fact that for um, the past years, beginning in 2009-10, when I did my first book using photographs that have been drawn on, um, I've been working with pretty much consistent uh, materials. Before you unveil, yes, we've done another 15 minutes. Do you want to do a little pause before we get into these, or do you want to keep going? Um, let's keep going, then we'll be okay. finished. Okay. okay. Sure. So, so I'm going to uh, turn, the, turn, turn it around for you. I'll turn it around for you. Yeah. So this is, this is um, an example from a book on Alcatraz, what, the second prison book that I've done. I've done one um, for San Quentin and then one for Alcatraz. So essentially I have a digital image file that's been printed digitally, commercially, just as an 18 by 24, 18 by 22 <laughs> print. And um, so there's, there's an initial drawing with oil pastel, and then there's a working with gesso and with ink. <laughs> and again, because um, the first book I did was in 2008, 18, oh, 2009, 10, 11, and then I did another one in 2014, another one 15. I've done them sporadically. Um, now you've drawn in the figure. Right, onto a photograph that I took. And everything other than the figure is the pure photograph? Yes. Okay. So this does have a, uh, has a, a layer of fixative sprayed over it. Okay. And... Um, I would say in each of these book projects, and they varied from um, a series of, some of them are as small as like just a dozen or 20 or 30 or 40. Mm -hmm. This particular um, set was really large. This is about 120 plus, 123 or four, I think. For Alcatraz. For Alcatraz, yeah. In so, the book, is it one per page? It's one per page. So the book's about a hundred. Yeah, I, or four I pages as well. yeah, yeah, something okay. like that. Right. Um, but but essentially, from each of these projects, from one to the next, they've all been the same materials, and there's been no change. There's been no addition of materials, and the only um, variation from one to the next is the color of the oil pastel that's used. So the oil pastel is the same throughout each of these books. So one of them might have a red line. One of them might have a green line. And this book has a blue line. But okay. there's, there's so no... So there's, there's San Quentin and there's Alcatraz. So San Quentin is the most recent one. And okay. um, before this, I did Monastery. Okay. So I did... Um, and these were the pandemic books that I did. Um, and let me see. I have something I could show you. Um, this is the, the San Quentin book. So this is what the book looks like. Um, no, this is this is oh this is the, the this is the Alcatraz. This is yeah. this one. So this is what they end up looking like in the book. And this is what you just saw, I think. So when it's re It feels really different than in the book Here. than with the big pieces over there. So oh. so essentially I'm taking a photograph, I'm drawing it, and then I'm re-photographing it with the drawing. And when it's re-photographed and then it's printed, yeah. then everything is more integrated because it's all yeah. flat on the same level. It, it seems to yeah. yeah. It seems to like blend more and be more like natural as if it was actually there. Yes. Whereas with these when you first worked it, I can really feel like that there's two layers or two different times or two different yeah. pieces yeah. in the same image. Yeah. Wow, and, he, and then here really just comes together. Yeah. And you really like, it's crazy because you actually think the two things inhabit the same space even though they're made of different uh, materials. Yeah, yeah. 
So I, I think one of the things that, that I've been really interested in, because the, the first project was a cemetery project with ghosts, and for having something that's not physically present, that in fact feels other, uh, using the, the gesso and, and working just monochromatically with black and white is really wonderful. And I love the fact that the gesso, in fact, um, does not cover completely that I that I'm able to to apply it and have the actual photograph coming through. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see if I've got another one where you can see that the 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 image is actually there. That it's all about what what's evoked by the actual physical space. That's kind of cool that the head is partly transparent. Yeah. You've got so, ghosts over here too. Yes, a lot of ghosts, a lot of the past, a lot of um, being influenced by past experiences, the people and places we've been and relationships we've had. Yeah. I know it's not a materials question, but when did you start using ghosts in your work? At what, like, did you hit a certain like age or maturity or something where this <laughs> Um, where this became more of a direction for your thoughts? I think be, before the ghosts, before thinking of um, loss and passage of time and all, there was um, an overlay to try and find a way of expressing what isn't visible and what isn't seen. The idea of trying to make visible something that right. is otherwise not apparent. And that came from um, a strong sense with someone who was um, actually performing and had been, um, it had a long history of problems with alcoholism and alcohol. And the whole time I was um, in this audience, listening and watching, I felt a desire for a bottle of whiskey. You know, the, the, that which wasn't absent. And that started, it was to paint that bottle, someone with the bottle of whiskey that wasn't to paint the bottle of whiskey that's not that there. Wasn't there. That, that was, was your first. That was the very first like direction. missing the piece. Mixing the the back and forth, and then starting to dig into relationships, people that had been lost. You know, whether it was love or death, or you know that passage, right. and not having something and things that leave a mark what kind of trace is left behind or when no trace is left behind and wanting to, um, you know, I, I had um, friends who died and family members who died and, you know, the longer we live, the more we're dealing with issues of mortality and we're seeing it all around us. Right. And there, you know, once it starts, it expands and starts to give that whole other um, layer. And, and using, you know, using gesso is a really easy way of creating layers. Okay. And inks, and anything with transparency or anything that you can um, control with some openness to, mm -hmm. lead, to create amb not just ambiguity, but possibilities that are not limited you know beyond what, the limitation what materials or medium did you use for that first whiskey bottle i was working in oil paint oil paint mm -hmm. and gesso no i was just working just in oil paint, oil paint and i was building up just layers. layering i was building up layers so actually there'll, there'll be some paintings here that you'll see that have you know layer upon layer upon layer and where yeah. an image has has changed you know, it's um gone inward gone into childhood, it's gone into um, really um, other things that then come to the surface and that sometimes that which we would otherwise be seeing is totally lost to the imagined, the remembered. Yeah. All right. Thank you, David. Pause here. All right, wonderful.